One question is of course if there is any value in attempting to estimate uncomputable objects such as omega numbers or uncomputable functions such as the busy beaver functions that we saw in the last unit that were also uncomputable. We will see that we have found them a use that no one thought possible, but to answer in a more general fashion, let's take an extreme position. Let's say that we had all the digits of an omega number. How would it be useful? Well, we would have the exact halting time for every possible computer program, perhaps in different order if we choose different universal Turing machines. But because even though omega depends on the choice of Turing machine, we also know that because Turing universality, any universal Turing machine used to calculate omega also calculates all other computer programs for all other computer programs enumerated, enumerated by any other universal Turing machine. In other words, having access to the infinite digits of omega does not only give us the halting probability for that particular universal Turing machine to calculate that omega, but in some fundamental way it gives us access to all of them in some way or another. And under the charge Turing thesis, it also means that we have access to basic knowledge about all the computer programs that are possible. And as you may know, computer programs can be anything. It, they could be a simulation of our solar system or the answer to a particular mathematical problem, including those for which we would know that there is no answer if the computer program that encodes such problem will ever halt. This is why the omega number is also known as the infinite wisdom number. It is similar to Jorge Luis Borges' infinite library, where you have all possible books containing all possible knowledge but also all possible fake information. However, it is also of a very different nature to the books contained in Borges' infinite library, because in Borges' library, if you remember his short story, The Library of Babel, books can be conceived as having all possible permutations of letters or words. But here we only have those permutations that have computational content that are the result of running a computer program. So it is a more meaningful subset of all possible statistical combinations. In other words, if you were given the choice to look into an infinite library, either containing an infinite number of books from all possible permutations of words and letters, or an infinite library with all possible computer programs, you should definitely pick the library of infinite computer programs, as you would more easily find answers to questions such as, let's say, Fermat's last theorem. Also notice how knowing the busy beaver values that we explored in the previous unit would also give you information of the halting probability because it would tell us that for certain computer program size we can decide whether they, they will halt or not. Because if they go beyond the busy beaver values, we know that those computer programs will never halt. So from there we can calculate some digits of uh, omega. So, hopefully you are seeing how everything starts to get connected. A different question is, of course, how to know which program is which, and which program encodes the question we want Chaitin's Omega to answer. However, you already know that short computer programs encode most of the meaningful objects that we care about, such as the mathematical constant pi, compared to arbitrarily long programs because arbitrarily long computer programs relative to their output may be encoding random objects that may be good applications for pseudo-random generation in a casino, but nothing else. So, by looking at the length of computer programs relative to what they produce, you may have some sort of hint as to what they may be encoding to look for interesting questions and answers. Now, you may start seeing how algorithmic complexity is deeply related to knowledge and meaning in a very profound manner, and very different to the way in which computation is often portrayed as incapable of dealing with deep questions about meaning and epistemology, especially as if these concepts were trivial generalizations of classical information theory, which they are not, because Shannon Entropy is missing the most important ingredient, precisely the concept of computation. 
but we also saw how even Shannon entropy itself is related to meaning, even if in simpler ways. One could think of having access to any digit of a Chaitin omega number in finite time as having access to some sort of oracle, because one can always formulate questions in terms of whether a computer program will halt or not, with only yes and no questions that Chaitin's omega number will be able to answer. In fact, one would have the answers to all mathematical questions including simulations of real-world phenomena. So you can see how power powerful this would be. In some way, the Chaitin Omega Oracle is of similar nature to the computer Deep Thought in Douglas Adams' story The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. In a fundamental way, asking questions using Chaitin's Omega is like asking Deep Thought the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything else. Just as Deep Thought, Chaitin's Omega number holds all answers for all questions but we would still need to figure out how to formulate those questions correctly. But just as in this science fiction story where the computer deep thought gave the answer 42 to the ultimate question, any as answer given by a Chaitin Omega number would be hard to understand and, in principle, impossible to follow by other mechanistic computations. And again, just like in Adam's story, one would need to rely on another more powerful computer to verify the answer which in turn may provide a more puzzling and impossible to follow answer. This is at the heart of Gödel's and Turing's proofs of degrees of undecidability and non-computability. However, only knowing the first n digits of omega would enable us to decide whether or not each program up to n bits in length ever halts. So knowing all digits would even enable you further to decide the halting problem of all possible computer programs, but even having a few is very useful. For example, Kaliut himself has found how large the computer programs would need to be to solve some mathematical problems such as Riemann's hypothesis and Goldbach's conjecture, just to mention two famous problems. When thinking of Chaitin's Omega in terms of a wisdom number containing all possible and infinite knowledge, including the answers to all questions that can be formulated by means of a computer program, such as all open mathematical problems and more, it is very interesting to find out the, that the digits of omega are unattainable and incompressible, meaning that there are no shortcuts to reach that knowledge. No process can overrun omega because it cannot be derived by any means simpler than the sequence of bits of omega itself, because Omega turns out to be random, algorithmic random. That doesn't mean that one cannot calculate a few digits of Omega for a number of cases. For example, if we knew that computer programs 0, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 0 halt, because remember computer programs can be written in binary as a sequence, just as they are in executable code in your computer. And notice that these are prefix free, by the way then we would know that the first digits of omega are 0 0.111, which in turn, if we had started with 0 0.111 from this omega number, we would also be able to reverse engineer the process and know which programs halted uh, to produce that uh, approximation of the omega number. In this sense, the omega number encodes and maximally compresses the information of the halting state of all possible computer programs. Therefore, by knowing Chaitin's omega, one could solve the halting problem. But also by knowing Chaitin's omega, uh, we are compressing all possible computer programs in the optimal way. And that means that Chaitin's omega is actually algorithmic random.